let's talk a little bit about workflows. Now, I've picked a random shot in here. It doesn't really matter which shot that I use. And the first thing I'm going to need to do is to add another node after the first node that we have selected. Now, to do that, Option and S on the Mac, Alt and S for all my Windows friends out there. And what we're going to do is add some contrast to this shot. But what we want to figure out is where exactly we'd like to tear this image apart and to start pulling the brights away and to start pulling the blacks away. So for example, I think somewhere around the 300 mark is where we're going to go, which is going to cut it right across this line here. This line here is pretty much not going to move that much at all. I'm just going to adjust the contrast not too much, probably to about there. We can even adjust the overall lightness a little bit here just to bring our values up. And that is looking pretty good as a starting point. If we're not happy with the entire balance of this shot, I might need to do a uniform adjustment to the red, green, and blue channel or a combination of these, but maintain the tonal range. On this particular shot, there is no reason why the color should be off on either the shadows, midtones, or highlights. 99% of the time, it's off in the entire tonal range of the shot, and a printer light adjustment is all that's needed. The only correct way to do these adjustments is prior to the lookup table or curve that we have applied, which is really the way offset tools are designed to work. Now, the reason is because the offset controls are designed to act like a traditional exposure control as the image is going to expand and compress based on the shape of the curve. That means when we look at the corrections through an S curve, we'll see more changes in the straight line portion of the curve, basically in the middle, rather than in the ends, which is the head or the toe of the curve. Now, creatively, it means that we can push our color quite hard into the image without affecting the blacks of the highlights as much as the midtones. Okay, let's look at the adjustment we just did. You'll see we've made a very minor adjustment. However, if I come back to the actual node and I turn it off and I turn it on, you can see that it's actually made quite a staggering difference. And all this with the knowledge that we didn't break the relationship between the tonal ranges and kept it all natural. Now, with that being said, using the offset wheel can be, I'm not going to say tricky, it can just be a little bit cumbersome. And we really want to have precise control over them. Well, this is where our printer light hotkeys come into play. I'm just going to reset it. Navigate up to the color drop down. I'm going to come down to our printer light hotkeys and make sure they are turned on. Now, we can be as precise as we want to a quarter of a point adjustment to these printer lights. Half a printer light would be a value of 0.5. A quarter printer light would be a value of 0.25. This is a way that you're going to be able to get in and make corrections faster than you ever have before. In the previous lesson, I did really focus on the red, green, and blue printer lights. However, if you come down to the shortcuts, you'll see that we have the master, which is obviously all the red, green, and blue being adjusted at one time. We can then get in and worry about the red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow all separately of each other. So keep that in mind. Let's try this out. I'm going to switch to the parade scope. Now you'll see that in this case right here, I'm just going to look more so at the, the highlights of the shot. And you'll see that our blue is a little bit on the low side. Now you might be thinking, well, Kev, we can you know pull away from uh, you know, red and green to add to the blue, or what we can do is simply just add a little bit of blue to this shot again by utilizing our printer light hotkeys. Now, for me, the way that they're mapped out, which is how they're mapped out standard inside of Resolve, is with the numeric pad. Now, keep in mind that's for the full point changes. Now, if you could get in and map your keyboard to have all of the printer light shortcuts as you know. One is command, one is option, one is shift, however you want to have this laid out. Okay, let's see how we can do a simple adjustment with the printer light hotkeys. I'm going to use the 9 on the numeric pad. And as I hit 9, you'll notice over here that not only is my scope adjusted, but over here you'll see that the blue value has jumped to 26. And what I'm going to do is just add a couple more in there. And you'll see that as I'm doing this, blue is being added. Now, I don't want to add too much blue, so let's just bring that down to 26. And I'm just going to bring the red and green down just a little bit to about there. I think that's looking pretty good 
like that. Now keep in mind that I could adjust the master level now to bring everything up if I wanted to, but take a look at the before, which looks like that, very, very green, and the after, which has a little bit of blue added. All the whites look a lot better now than they did before, and for me, this shot has now been color corrected and is the new baseline for us to start with.